uh, multiplication and division. We're multiplying and dividing with rational numbers. And my note is out. And we had just worked through some of the um, exponential rules, I believe, right? This is where we left off, does that look right? Okay, we've got a few left. Um, our, these are not just simplifying and writing with exponents. They're actually going to change a little bit. Um, this actually saves you solve. So you're going to use the properties of exponents in order to solve, um, but you have to sort of um, get the pieces combined together or separated out to make that work. So you'll notice on the left-hand side, both of these have a base of 2, right? So that just sort of screams out you exponential rules because this is just like one of the rules. How can I combine 2 to the n and 2 to the 7? I can add the exponents, right, Lauren? Yes. So I can write it like this. Now, I can compare that to 60. And I can play around with it to make it work. But it'll be a lot easier if I write 64 so that it looks like 2 to a power. Do you know what power would make 2 to a power to make 64? Four. 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 Like four answers. 2 to the 4th is 16. Oh, 6. 2 to the 8. 2 to the 8 is 256. Oh. Two to the six is sixty-four. Yeah. All right. So this is sixty-four. Sorry. Two to the six. So in order for these now to be the same, because their bases are the same, I can simply compare their exponents, right? So I can actually just flat out look at the n plus seven and the six. And in order for these to be the same, n plus seven would have to equal six. So what does it have to be? Okay. We're going to do the same process on part B. It's a less than or equal to symbol, but it really doesn't affect anything. Okay. The process is the same. I'd like to have the same face on each side. This one's a little bit nicer in the fact that the left-hand side is already a single base to an exponent. But it's a little bit more challenging because the right-hand side looks like a fraction. We talked about changing fractions into things that don't necessarily look like fractions less time. Sort of. How can I write 1 over 81 so it doesn't look like a fraction? Okay, so let's not do the three part yet. Can I write 81 to some power instead of 1 over 81? Negative 1. Okay, right? So I can take something that's in the exponent and or in the denominator, and I can bring it up to the numerator if I make the exponent negative. That's actually one of our properties, is this ability to be able to move things up and down with negative the exponents. Then we're going to do, as Kayla suggested, and think about that 81. Okay? So how can 81 be written so it has a base of 3? It is 3 to the 4. And you might have been able to jump in there automatically from the one over 81. But some of you probably wouldn't have been. So why don't you just see where each of these are coming from? Now this is a property, right? 3 and 4 to negative 1. What can I do? 3 to the negative 4th. I multiply, right? And now that we have the same base on both sides, we can just flat out compare the exponents. So what do I have? Close, oh, less, less than or equal to, right? So whatever the M symbol between them was originally, the symbol stays that way between the exponents. So as long as I had an exponent that was smaller than negative 4, I would end up with 3 raised to that exponent being smaller than 1 over 8. Approximation is a fabulous tool, and it's probably one of the most, most widely used things in mathematics outside of the classroom, right? You do it at the grocery store, 
um, you might estimate with this when you purchase something online. We do this when we're measuring a piece of wood or a piece of fabric when you're trying to create an art project. We use estimation all the time. So it's a really good tool. This is an approximation or an estimation idea. It says to approximate the following product. It should say quotient. Do that right now. All right, so if I were trying to divide 20 and 1 third, divide by 9 and 7 eighths, what numbers would be easier to work with that are approximately equal to the ones I'm starting with? 20 divided by 10. So this is approximately equal to what I started with, and 20 divided by 10 is it's 2. So this is approximately 2. So you're going to see approximate ideas in your homework. All right, example number nine has several ways it can be worked. Um, Jasmine is reading a book. She's finished three-fourths of the book, and she has 82 pages left to read. How many pages has she read? What are we going to do? There's, there's several ways to do that, so a suggestion. Okay, 82 times 3. Lauren, why do we want to do 82 times 3? How would that help us? What would that be? Okay, so what your reasoning is that 82 pages is one-fourth of the book, right? So when I multiply 82 times 3, what am I finding? It is three fourths, which is how much she's read, correct? So if I take 82 times 3, this will give me the number of pages read. And what is 82 times 3? 246 pages. It will be helpful to me and to you if you write a little bit of what you're thinking now when you do a problem. Because if you make an error in your thinking, I can give you partial credit. But let's say, for instance, you did all of this, but the question had asked you how many pages are in the book, and you stopped short of giving that. Right? You're just this exact paperwork on the exact what I've written on the words what you wrote, but the question was slightly different, and so how many pages have you read? Well, if you stop right here, I can't give you as much partial credit, because I don't know if you understood, for instance, if you didn't write this piece down, that this is the number of pages she read as opposed to the number of pages in the book. So the more details that you write down about what you're finding, the more helpful it is for me, because I can see what you're thinking, and for you, to use more points. And that's good, then, right? So if we were doing how many pages in the book, and we've done this work already, can you answer that question? Sure. So we could just add those numbers together, right? 246 and 82. All right, last question in this section. Al gives half of his marbles to Bev. Bev gives half of these marbles to Carl. Carl gives half of these to Danny. If Danny was given four marbles, how many did Al originally have? Now what? Work backwards, which is actually a problem solving technique that you guys have all done before. <coughs> I know you've done it, besides those of you who've had math one and you did it with me before. You've probably done it at some point in a math class when you said, I don't know how to do this problem. Let's look at the back of the book and see what the answer is. And see if you can figure out how they got to that answer. Have you ever done that before? Me too. Yeah. And that's not bad thinking, right? Even if it's not the problem that's in the back of the book, sometimes you can find an odd one that you're not, that you can go to the back of the book and look at. Right. Okay, so working backwards works really well for some problems. It doesn't work great for everything. But for this problem, it's a great idea. So what are we going to do? Somebody tell me what to write. Okay, so let's start with Danny. Danny has four marbles. Now what? So Carl originally had eight before he gave them away, right? Eight marbles. 
and this is before giving to Danny. It doesn't look very much like Danny with the check. Okay, now what? Bev. What about Bev? She had 16 marbles. Again, we've got the same idea, but she gave hers to uh, Carl. And then what? Al. So what about Al? 32 marbles. Before giving them to Beth. So the answer is what? Yeah, so Al originally had 32 marbles. And if you'll notice, this is actually an exponential. Every time you multiply by 2, the powers of 2 are those exponentials we just talked about on the previous slide, right? That's what's present here. Make sure that when you're working on word problems, that it's word problems with context, that your answer has context too. You don't necessarily have to write the sentence that I just wrote out, but you do need to say 32 marbles, not just 32. Okay? All right. 